Hello everybody out there, Chris and Mike here, and welcome back to another Dark Avenger comic book review. In this review, the books we're going to be talking about were released on... November 12th, 2014. We've got a lot of interesting books, so let's waste no time and jump into it before my tongue ties itself. Any news? Everyone to... Convergence, can't wait for it. 2015, we are officially actually in the middle of November right now. Aha, uh -huh, So, one right. more month and then we are in 2015. And in 2015, we all know what's coming, 300. It's coming fast, and I am excited, and we are definitely gearing up for it. I believe it'll be at the end of the summer, just like all the other ones, all the other comic reviews. Uh, the 100th the hundredth was in September, 200th was in, I believe, the end of August. So yeah, this one is going to be around the August, end of August again. So October. If you want to use August anyway, and September. Yeah, let's, go. let's start with DC Comics. Smallville Chaos issue number four, digital first book. This is the final part to the uh, Chaos story arc, and then we're going into the final uh, miniseries of the final episode of season 11, and they're not coming back for a season 12, which is understandable. At the same time, it's sad because this was our last connection to Smallville. However, Season 11 went, in my opinion, well. Did it go spectacular? Maybe. I would say it went well. Let's say it went well. I enjoyed it. For what it was worth, I did enjoy it. In this issue, you have Supergirl and Superboy along with Cyborg Superman, Hank Hanshaw, uh, fighting against um, the Sparrow. Right? Yeah. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Not the Sparrow. Eclipso. Why do I say Despero? Mm. Despero the sounds like The O. The That's O and Despero. So anyway, they're fighting Eclipso. Lex is reaching out to the monitor saying, why don't you just reboot our universe? And that's leading into the next story arc, which is Crisis. You have Superman and Lois who are prisoners of the monitors, and they just basically throw them into the bleed. That's kind of like an execution, but Superman somehow survives and ends up saving Lois. I'm not going to give you guys anything that happens to Booster Gold. And for most of you... Um, I know a lot, everybody who's, who reads Smallville mostly reads it digitally first. They don't really read it through the hardcover. I like mine in the paper form. I don't read digital books um, <clears throat> without also uh, owning a physical copy when it comes to Smallville. And Batman Beyond, I, I just read it because I enjoy Batman Beyond, and that book's kind of I'm on 50-50 with right now. So Superman survives, like I said. He saves Lois. Cyborg Superman ends up leaving Earth. Um, with the Eclipso gem, so it stays out of the reach of humans. And um, I'm not going to say how Superman and Lois end up back on their Earth or what happens to Lex's core because they're all fueled by the yellow lantern ring. But let's just say this is ending with the beginning of the crisis. Mm. So we'll see how uh, this uh, whole season ends. Hopefully it won't end with the Smallville universe being erased because that would be messed up. Oh, that would be terrible. Then I'll be honest with you, I wouldn't consider season 11 a legit season for Smallville then because I don't like that. But I don't think that'll happen. I think somehow Superman and the That'd other... That'd be like a stop to the face if they did that. I think so too, but I don't think they'll do that. I don't think they're going to go that far. No, let's see. Green Lantern Corps issue number 36. In this issue of uh, God Hand, you have, um, what do you call it, John Stewart going with a small team of Green Lanterns to save and, and uh, bring back the remaining Star Sapphires, and they're not alone, they're going with the Weaponer, and I like the Weaponer in this book, I really like the Weaponer, he makes this sword, which is energized with White Lantern energy, so it works against the gods, sort of. And you see that Jon Stewart is still um, getting over or, you know, getting through what the Star Sapphires did to Fatality. So he shows up. Humongous fight breaks out. The artwork in this book is gorgeous. By the way, the artwork in Smallville also is very good. Um, so in the end, they do get out. Uh, they do leave. They do escape. However, uh, Jon Stewart goes through a fundamental change. And I'm going to give you guys a bit of a spoiler Are alert with this me? book. Wow. He becomes the first male Star Sapphire. Huh. We all know he's not going to keep the ring. I doubt he's going to remain a Star uh. Sapphire. But that's how they get out. And um, it turns out that the new gods actually know exactly what's going on. And they're basically ranching all the lanterns together. And then they're just going to eliminate them all at once. I have to so. admit, Jon Stewart looks good in pink. 
Just take your Lego book. <laughs> okay. So we actually have two Lego variants this week. It's mine and Justice League <laughs> United issue number six. Yeah. yeah. I like the Lego variants. It's very. I fun. didn't do the Batman one because I love the Superman on the cover, so I, I I wasn't about to um. Yeah. So as the book opens up, it's basically uh, the Justice League United team going up against um. The uh, oh god, why why. Are they doing the Legion of Superheroes? Thank you, Legion of Superheroes. The artwork is really I was amazing. just gonna compliment the artwork. Yeah, it's like you know, like you have uh, them fighting, and you have Supergirl going against Bits, and Bits like saying, you know, there's a new universe that's coming because with Ultra, you know, the whole thing of getting him there. Then we have Green Arrow going up against Hawkman, and they like, and you know, because Hawk Hawkman says, you know, Bits saved me, and you guys didn't, you left me to die. Animal Man, uh, we get to see a real huge transformation. I never really saw that because I never read um, Animal Man before when yeah. he switched into that. And I think he has feelings for uh, Courtney, who's a star girl. So basically, they're trying to protect Ultra from Legion Lost. Uh, Legion of Superheroes? The Legion of Superheroes. Why do I keep saying Legions? Uh, destroying them. And in the end, of course. Uh, Bit got uh, Ultra and Miyabin on a different planet as uh, they're, get, they're trying with uh, Hawkman to stop him. Uh, let's just say things get a little bit too chaotic when they get that and there's someone else that's uh, gonna be in the next issue. The Legion Lost. I, I didn't want to spoil it. Why? It's kind of a, a known thing because the Lost yeah, Legion, Legion wanted to Lost go back with the Legion of Superheroes. In. I didn't want to say If you read well, Legion Lost, you know that they were well, trying to get if back. If you want to know what happened with the whole thing, Majigger, then yeah, you can. What? No. Oh. I thought I missed something. No, I thought I missed oh. something. Yeah. But really excellent issue. I am definitely going to pick up the next issue to see what's going to happen. I mean, we're Ultra now in control. Oh, things are going to get very bad now. Now, my favorite book <clears throat> of the week from DC Comics has to go to Batman 36. Scott Snyder is doing a really excellent job with Endgame. Endgame, basically, the Joker is back now. He's back, and he's back with a vengeance. We saw at the end of The Death in the Family, Joker destroyed the Bat family. And for an entire year since, things have been broken in the family because of the big secret that Batman kept. The family in Batman Eternal is now back, back and reunited. Um, and actually I believe the reunition happened in Batman and, soon to be Batman and Robin again, mm -hmm. and Batman promised no more secrets, but of course once everybody finds out Dick Grayson's alive and Bruce knew about it, that's just going to end the whole family all over again, but that's beside the point. In this book, it's a Jokerized Superman versus Batman, and I love how in this book Batman uh, makes mention. Everybody always asks Batman versus Superman, who would win? And he tries to snap Clark out of it. It doesn't work, and he resorts to a radioactive Krypton Kryptonian dust, which is basically Kryptonite chewing gum, so to speak. Or how did he put it? Uh, yeah, Kryptonite chewing gum, and he knocks Superman out. And the Joker basically. I love how Scott Snyder basically did this also. It's, it's the Joker, but it's Scott Snyder's writing. Basically, the Justice League is in Argus um, going through, um, what was it called? A, uh, anti uh, being treated with antitoxins, and they're going to be out for a week. Mm. It's going to take four to five days to um, clean up the Justice League. I would be more interested if this story connected to Justice League of America... Or not Justice League of America, Justice League, and we got to see what would happen a week without the Justice League. Like, there would be a story arc where it's a week without the Justice League and it's just Batman, but right now we're going through quarantine in Justice League. But I, th I really think that it would have been interesting to see this connect with the Justice League a little bit and show a world without a Justice League for an entire week. And it's up to Batman and the Bat family to... Um, substitute for the Justice League until they get back. That would be very interesting. I wish that they would have done that because, I mean, remember Zero Year crossed over to things, uh, Death and the Family crossed over to books. It would have been cool if this would have crossed over because this would have been interesting. So, Justice League is out for a week. Batman is now in search of Joker and he goes to the one place he doesn't want to go to. Arkham Asylum. More, um, more specifically, Cell 801. And... 
The Joker returns, and he's been disguised as somebody we've seen in previous books. I'm not going to spoil what that is, but I will mention, read the annuals, and you'll probably know who. And I love the page where actually he's back, like the Joker's actually back. I love Greg Capello's artwork. Really, really great. And he's not missing his face anymore. So for those of you that were like, oh boy, we get to see the Joker without his skin. No, um, they made sure to fix that. And Joker has this humongous plan, and um, he's going to... Um, spread his Joker toxins throughout Gotham, Batman's paralyzed, and he's like, don't worry, when you wake up, uh, everything uh, and everyone in Gotham will be um, laughing at you, and that's where it kind of ends. And then the secondary story, I really just, I don't, I didn't find it interesting. Yeah, I, I remember how you said the Joker was like more of a serious guy than instead of the ha ha he he type. Yeah, they made the Joker very, uh, Scott Snyder wrote the Joker very intelligent and I think that's brilliant because you got this psychopathic crazy nut job clown, but now he's not only all that but he's also super smart. I like it and I love the direction where this is going. Um, now that we're out of Zero Year, which was a really long story arc, I believe it was like 11 issues long, uh, I'm glad that we're actually moving forward with Endgame. I believe Endgame is going to be uh, about 6 or 7 issues, so it's going to be a shorter series, but it's going really well. I would definitely recommend checking it out. And now we're in the weekly. It's Future's End, issue number 28. Um, Tim is looking for his girlfriend who's lost. 50 Sue goes to um, Faraday and... Um, his I forgot who the boss the the guy was that he was working with. Um, it's completely the person's the guy's losing leaving my mind completely because this was connected to the voodoo stuff and actually voodoo does show up and uh, that part was very boring so I kind of skimmed over that but Fifty Sue's looking to put a team together now to go back to Cadmus Island to fight Brother I and to kill uh, Slade. You got Terry versus Bruce Batman. The two Batman going at each other. That was really cool also. Uh, Terry barely escaped. And then, like I said, you got Tim who's in search of his girlfriend. And Jason finds out, actually, that... Um, what do you call it? Um, the doctor, the good doctor that he's been working with. Um, he's cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, basically. So, go figure. And then I, and then also we have Lois Lane, this, this panel at the show. She's on Cadmus Island now. You know, her <clears throat> her leap of faith led her there, so she was happy that it was true, but she comes face to face with herself from Earth 2. Lois Whoa. Lane Red Tornado. <clears throat> that was worth the re that was really cool to see that one panel. I remember Kat on the live show said she can't she couldn't wait to see what the reaction of Lois meeting herself from Earth 2 was. The only sad thing is that's the end of Lois in this entire book, so we're not going to really? see anything further until Future's End 29, if we're lucky. So, um, the meeting was interesting. Batman Eternal Issue 32. Batman versus... Um, oh God. Why did it leave me? No, I forgot. Um, uh, wasn't a spoiler. I forgot who it was, um... Shoot, why did his name completely leave me? It's gonna, I'm going to remember halfway through this, and then it's going to be crazy. But uh, he saves, spoiler, but um, in the end, she, she escapes, and so does... Um, I can't believe I forgot who... Um, shoot. Tommy escapes also, and Batman ends up saving Batwing, which is a plus. This scene was worth it, seeing, um, what do you call it, Alfred reunite with his daughter, and he's home safe now, and then I don't want to say what, it turns out that uh, was found, or uh, that Tommy found, but let's just say um, a lot of things are pointing to, hush, thank you, hush, hush was uh, a Batman saved spoiler from hush and then hush actually How? I can't believe I, it completely I, I'm thinking in my head while I'm talking about this book trying to figure it out but when he took Alfred he stole his DNA and he was able to go into the one of the safe um, safe rooms mm -hmm. that Batman hid all throughout the city and he gave uh, detective um, oh, no 
Bard, Detective Bard, Hush gives Detective Bard this story. So basically, Bruce Wayne's going to be implement, implicated for having all these safe houses all over the place. And Batman is um, kind of found responsible. There's an explosion, which Hush did, but he frames Batman for it. That's the long and short of this uh, story, but the story's definitely going somewhere really nice. It was an enjoyable read this week. It was The Albert scene was very nice, but... Uh, going to be interesting to see Batman vs. Hush at some point. I mean, we're in issue 32 of 52, so 20 weeks to go. Mm -hmm. And now we have Earth 2 World's End issue number 6. Dr. Fate beat Famine, however, um, Flash and Hawkgirl are still suffering from the ramifications of Famine, and they're slowly dying, but Dr. Fate leaves because he has to be, he has to find Jimmy. Because of the mother box. I'm going to skip the Atlantean parts. Spoiler alert here. The Superman that they found at the end. It wasn't really Superman. It turns out that they've been making a ton of Superman clones. Wait, doesn't so, that sound like uh, what we saw in the movie of... Uh, oh, what was that movie? Where there was clones of Superman? I don't know, but... Um, Doomsday. What basically Lois is saying is there's a possibility if they're cloning Superman that the original Superman is somewhere there. So she wants to go looking for them, but let's not forget Thomas Wayne as well as um, Power Girl want to go save Helena, aka Huntress. And you've got a Green Lantern uh, looking to unite all the different uh, totems: of the white, the green. The, he has already the rot and uh, a few other things. We get introduced to Ted Grant in here. I'm not going to spoil that. That was really cool. And then Dr. Fate apologizes to Jimmy about something. We don't know what, though. And it's kind of left with a heavy to be continued. Really crazy stuff happened in the end. But let's just say that um, we find out who the avatar of the white is. And it's connected to Green Lantern. And it definitely was like a... It was a really nice ending. Out of the three weeklies this week, though, I got to be honest with you. <clears throat> none of them really jumped out at me like usually I'm saying World's End was top I am enjoying World's End but again I feel like the weekly series are average reads at best right now but again these are weekly series this is to be expected not every single issue could be spectacular Batman Eternal is going to be 52 issues uh, Future's End is going to be in the 40s and this is going to end I believe in the high 20s or the low 30s so it's to be expected that some issues are going to fall under the average category at best. So uh, I'm just going to check the time really quick. And we're good. And with that sip of Pepsi, we are now in Marvel. Nova issue 23, Axis tie-in. Just like Guardians of the Galaxy, I feel like whenever there's an event going on, Nova is somehow attached to it. And the best way to sum up this book, because I got through this book fairly quickly, you have Nova versus Cole. Which, for those of you that remember mm -hmm. Axis, yeah. Cull is the Hulk's Hulk, basically. I just, the Hulk uh, is able to Hulk out even further, they call apparently. Me Zorro Hulk. And if you don't know what's going on in Axis, this page basically explains everything that's going on. So, again, for people like myself who aren't reading Axis, it's explained for you. So you have the original Captain America who called Nova and Spidey, because apparently they're the only ones that weren't affected from Genosha. And um, they're trying to figure out what to do. And Sam notices the Hulk is headed right for his town, where his mother and sister are. So he goes and saves the mother and sister and then goes headlong into fighting the Hulk. Really nice artwork. And that's the rest of the book, basically. Nova trying to beat the Hulk. And every time it looks like Nova's winning, he isn't. I mean, he gets his hand broken. He gets punched halfway across the world literally and he ends up in the hospital and it doesn't look like he's going to be able to be Nova-ing around um, much after the last panel oh. of this book. Wow. That's heavy stuff. He got beat up bad though. Sam Alexander got really, he got his, his ass handed to him in this the, issue. I think he did that because uh, he wants to be like a part of the Avengers. Because, you know, it's like really important. To He's him. trying to be a hero. <clears throat> yeah, but he also wants to be an Avenger as well. And it, actually more of uh, them not being affected is going to be discussed uh, further in the view with Axis. Yeah, I heard that something happened and they tried yeah, to fix well, it. Yeah, I'll, I'll get to it when 
I enjoyed this issue, but again, it was a really quick read. This issue, on the other hand, I was kind of like, oh, God, please let this not be happening. Uh, Captain Marvel issue number nine. It's a standalone story. It's about, um, the, the cover says it all, Lila Cheney, who is a mutant who's able to teleport. And apparently she's able to teleport into space now, too, through her music. Like, she can home in on it and teleport to it. <clears throat> and that's how she ends up on Captain Marvel's ship. But before that, she was on this alien planet where she was um, supposed to uh, marry the prince of the uh, planet. And the prince is being forced to... Um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Things are kind of backwards <clears throat> on the planet. Like, the parents pick the girl for the prince to marry. Um, that The women basically have the most... Say Something that was very annoying, and I found myself reading this like Dr. Seuss. Um, on this planet, everybody talks in rhyme. Even Captain oh. Marvel tried. So, basically, um, there's a fight that happens at the, in the middle of the book with this woman, Mor Morlo, Marlo, uh, of Sleen, who actually wanted to marry <clears throat> the prince first, but she's evil. I didn't see that coming. So Captain Marvel fights her, beats her, and then we find out we find out a little bit more about Tick in this book, by the way. Tick's lifespan is only spoiler alert here, twenty years, and she's already lived oh, fourteen. You're talking of about them. the other Tick. This Tick. Oh. And in the end, spoiler alert again, she ends up marrying the prince, so the prince could basically um, fix the laws of the land where it's more equal and fair to him and then in the end Carol gets a letter which leads into Captain Marvel issue number 10 which is Carol Danvers 100th solo issue and gee I wonder if that's going to be a five dollar comic book of course it is this is Marvel Comics so I'm sure Captain Marvel issue 10 which is really Captain uh, which is Carol's issue 100 if you take Miss Marvel and Captain Marvel and put it together I'm sure Marvel will hike the price to $5 and make it a double-sized book or something like that. I don't know. I hope not, but it was an okay issue. Again, I feel like it's more of a transition or a lead-in to the next story. It was an interesting issue at best, though. Captain Marvel's been going strong, though, so for one okay average story, I'll accept that. I mean, it's going to happen every once in a while. Artwork was really, really good in this book, though. <clears throat> next, we've got Empire of the Dead Act 2. Uh, which is uh, issue three of five. Parental, Parental advisory. advisory, not for kids. And this book, again, just like in Act One, there was a book that focused on the mayor. In Act Two, Part Three, or issue three, or in this issue, I don't know why I just said it all over again. In this issue, it does focus on the mayor once again. The mayor has three problems. He has the detective that's snooping around now <clears throat> because he's very suspicious of the girl who was uh, enlisted in the hospital and is still sick, and she has some type of unknown disease. Um, the other, there's three people. The other one is the girl herself, and then the third one is his nephew who's causing a bunch of trouble um, through media. So basically this book is him going out and taking out all three of those people, minus the detective who somehow survives. In the beginning of the book, it actually opens up with that detective, um, uh, what do you call it, at the scene from the end of the last issue where the air where the airship uh, dropped those, um, what do you call it, Incer incendiary uh, bombs, or those explosive fires, fire bombs. So he's looking into that. He's looking into the girl, and he's kind of snooping around with the mayor now. So he only gets one page. They try to, to take him out. It doesn't work. <clears throat> Next is the girl. They kill her, and she turns into a zombie. And the, she was a vampire, so they, they staked her, and then she turned into a zombie, and they killed her. Interesting stuff, huh? And then the same thing happened with the nephew. In and out, it was a very straightforward um, story, to be honest, this issue. And then you get a little bit of the arena with Paul, and then it goes right to um, the little girl who gets two panels also, actually with the detective again. You get one page of that. And then you get um, Dr. Penny Jones for the last two pages, where you see the mayor is kind of starting to make his move on Penny Jones as well. So again, this is a very, the cover says it all. The mayor is the focal point in this issue. Uh, I find it interesting, but again, Empire of the Dead. I mean, I understand they threw uh, the vampires into the mix, but I really wanted to, uh, the reason I got this was because it focused on the zombies. Yeah. I understand vampires are in the mix, but focusing on the mayor, 
Again, really good issue though. Hopefully the next issue will focus on all the characters again. But I'll tell you one thing, this mayor made, you know, he cleaned up shop with all the problems he had. Minus, of course, the detective. Which I'm sure, you know, <clears throat> by the end of this series, the detective will do something or the mayor is going to end up doing something. Just check the time before I'm sure. Yes. Miles Morales, The Ultimate Spider-Man, issue number seven. The final fight is here. And I called it, and I kind of feel bad that I called this one. At the end of the last issue, uh, how, uh, Green Goblin says, I can tell you who your real father is. And I said this on the live show last month, and I knew it was true. Green Goblin basically says, I'm your father. Because basically, he's the one that made, you know, that made the serum, that made Miles Morales Spider-Man, and also made Peter Parker Spider-Man. And he mentions that Peter Parker, as well as Miles and himself, are immortal because of the uh, serum. And Miles basically beats the crap out of Green Goblin and shows Pete that he is more than capable of um, being Spider-Man. You know, taking over the mantle of Spider-Man. And he actually, in this book, Pete, spoiler alert here, gives Miles his uh, blessing to be Spider-Man. Here's a good panel. And Pete actually decides to go away for a while, and MJ goes with him. He says, I'll be gone for a while. <clears throat> and when uh, Miles says, when will you be back? He says, I don't know. I'm just going to be gone for, for a while. Just to get to figure everything out about himself and about what happened. And, you know, everything. And then you get a page with uh, Katie, or Kate Bishop. And then you get a page with Peter Parker and MJ. And then the final page I'm not going to spoil... But it's definitely leading into the next issue, and it involves Miles <clears throat> and somebody who wants to talk with Miles. Oh, I saw who was, but boy. So, and I'm sure Kate Bishop will definitely um, be playing a a part in the next story arc. Apparently, her parents are Hydra agents, mm -hmm. so yeah, she definitely will be fun playing. Fun times, it. very fun times. So I enjoyed this issue; it was really good, straightforward. I'm not gonna give you guys a dialogue. If you want, you should definitely be checking this book out. Um, the fight was awesome between Green Goblin and the two Spider-Men. And in the end, it was just great. Great epilogues for all three characters, Kate, Miles, and Pete. And just a really good book. I really am enjoying Miles Morales, The Ultimate Spider-Man. And I'll tell you guys the truth. If it's true that they're ending the Ultimate Universe, I hope that they keep Miles Morales around somehow, some way. Because his character definitely does not deserve um, the treatment of being erased from all existence because of the Ultimate Universe kind of slumping now. Because Miles Morales is an awesome character. And with that, just give us a couple of seconds and we will be back with the rest of the books from this week's comic book preview. Alright, we're back and Mike, your book is yes. next. And that would be Hobgoblin issue number two, Axis Tie-In. Um, it was okay, this book. Um, like, in this book, it just really is about uh, the uh, Hobgoblin going up against uh, the, um, the Goblin Knight, or the king of, of that. <coughs> and uh, here's some artwork, which is drawn, uh, it's a little, a little bit sketchy, but it's drawn, like, very nicely. So, uh, the Goblin Knight's, like, saying, you know, like, what are you doing? Like, uh, we're supposed to be, you know, villains and stuff, and you've changed a lot. So he goes and saves the kid, a uh, uh, missile mate, actually, he did, and he threw him out the window. And there's something about him in the end that uh, I'm going to talk about. So uh, the fight scene was, like, um, really uh, funny in some ways. Um, but uh, he just said, look, if you want to talk business with me in my office, not in uh, uh, hero clothes and stuff like that. And there's like these promos that I found really funny, so uh, I thought that was something. <coughs> so he goes to uh, Kingsley, I forgot what his name is. Um, oh, Roderick. Name? Yeah, Roderick goes to Kingsley. And, no, Roderick Kingsley. Never mind, you're gone. Oh, well, whoever his name was, like he goes to uh, Kingsley, and he just talks about uh, how his, uh, like everything will be his. Oh, Phil Yurick? <laughs> Phil Yurick, thank you. So Phil goes to him, and they have a big discussion. If you want to find out more about that, uh, read oh, the lady. book. Yeah, Lily actually uh, comes in this uh, issue at his office and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, all things just get a little bit uh, over too much. And uh, he says to go to Lily to go find him. And after the uh, promo, the guy... Oh, 
Phil goes back to the uh, mansion. And Missile May comes here to actually uh, I turn over to help him, but uh, let's just say he's not going to be the only <coughs> one. Basically, the others wow. are going to be uh, some of the uh, people who were with Hobgoblin, but no more. Because remember, in this uh, comic, they explain about how he had a team that was with him, <coughs> and then he got rid of him afterwards. So, it's going to, to be concluded, so I'll begin the last issue, obviously, because I want to see how it's going to end. So that's it. Superior Iron Man issue number one would make Superior Spider-Man <clears throat> very proud. So uh, this is on the heels of Axis also. Really quickly, guys, I did also read Captain America and the Mighty Avengers issue number one. To me personally, I just want to throw that out there really quick, not counting this book. I'm going to put it sideways. Uh, Captain America and the Mighty Avengers was an interesting book. An average read in my opinion though. I would definitely recommend checking out any issue number one. As always, you never know. For one person who doesn't like it, another person might. I know Mike did read it though, and he didn't really like it at all. I just um, don't like the personality, and I, but I understand because of it's because of Axis. But personally, yeah. I found the story okay. Um, will I come back and check out the next issue? I'll give it a shot, maybe. But at the same time, an average read. This book, however, quite the opposite. I love this book. Tom Taylor writes a perfect dark Iron Man, and the artwork complements the really good writing of this book. Uh, okay, so Iron Man is now in San Francisco, and he releases the <clears throat> Extremist 3.0. So basically anybody who has an app is able to experience Extremist. And then it's a week later, and you got this Z-list character, uh, oh, what was it, Hulkling, uh, Teen Hulkling, or something like that. What's his name? Oh, Teen Abomination, sorry. And basically he's trying to get uh, Iron Man's attention. It doesn't work, basically. He sends a drone after Teen Hulkling, beats the crap out of him, and then goes away. The real, the real Tony Stark is basically just chilling in the pool, enjoying himself, surrounded by mm -hmm. women, drinking, and everything. And Pepper shows up. And she's not too happy with what's going on with, um, with Tony. And actually, we get introduced to the new armor here, which is a combination of um, symbiote and his own little concoction. So basically, it's a symbiote-infused armor, so to speak. So he's got basically like a Venom-ish costume going on. Uh, it's really cool, though. But Pepper's trying to wake him up to what's going on, and um, she's and people who don't have extremists are getting abused by people who do have it. You got Daredevil, because Daredevil is in San Francisco. Um, keeping an eye on things and making sure everybody's well protected, so to speak. And uh, that's when Tony Stark decides to shut down um, Extremist 3.0. The free trial for San Francisco is over, and if people want to continue to have Extremist 3.0, they have to pay $100 a day. Yeah, that, And then we get to good. see the new armor for this page because Tony Stark wants to watch as the world begs for Extremist 3.0 and Pepper, I'm not going to spoil this though, Pepper turns to somebody because she said that Tony always worried about mm -hmm. things going um, south or, or losing his own mind, she thought it was ego but in the end she realizes that uh, it's true, it could happen and uh, Tony Stark's mind has been taken over by something so she turns to this person to save Tony or to try to snap Tony out of it. To be continued. This book was excellent. I left out a bunch of dialogue on purpose. You just gotta read this book. So much better than the... A hundred times better than the previous volume. And um, definitely a going place. Like I said, Tom Taylor writes an awesome dark Iron Man. It's gonna be more interesting to see what happens with Tony Stark when they fix him. Because in the beginning of the book, they said the entire uh, superhero community that was affected on Genosha was fixed. But somehow, Tony Stark evaded being fixed. And now you've got a more sinister Tony Stark running around in the Marvel Universe. So it's going to be interesting to see when they finally do fix Tony Stark, how he's going to, what the ramifications of all this is going on. And by the way, um, I love how in this book when Pepper sees that Tony's drinking again, she's like, and you went back to drinking? He's like, yeah, I'm drinking. A lot. 
I have a lot to make up for because of all those years of sobriety. I was like, whoa, okay, we're bringing that Tony Stark back. This is going to be very interesting. All right. Access issue number five. And in this comic book, uh, like when we reviewed before about uh, the Nova issue, it does explain about how uh, all this happened. There's a big meaning that's going on. Oh, look, that's on. what happened in the Nova book. Yeah, Nova and Spidey meet up with each other because there's a meaning that was called in. Nova's like excited, like saying a meaning, like, oh boy, this is going to be so awesome because, you know, he wants to be an Avenger. So, uh, the uh, new Captain America, I'm going to call him that because we know it's the Falcon, has said the Red Skull has escaped and, uh, basically he wants to, uh, protect everyone who is responsible and let's just say this happened. What happened? He uh, has this uh, portal thing where um, he's going to, like, basically, uh, they want him locked up in Hank Pym's subatomic ant farm, basically. And Spider-Man and, and, Spider and Nova, and Nova <laughs> escaped from there, but, uh, of course, uh, we have the, uh, I, I didn't know that the new Captain America could fly. I mean, seriously. Falcon! Of course you could fly! Well, I, th I thought he gave up on that because he's Captain Doesn't America. Doesn't matter, he's still Falcon on the inside. Oh. Well, I never read more about them. But anyway, yeah. So, uh, they get their way out. And Magneto actually saves them from getting caught. Mm -hmm. And that's, like, really weird. It's like, so, no one's, like, saying, so basically, all the good people have gone bad, and bad have gone to good, and uh, the next men have gone as well. So, uh, things get a lot worse. Yeah, when, yeah, uh, yeah. And yeah. that's where Nova that's goes, where after Nova goes after Cole, and, that means, and that's, do they give an annotation for uh, Nova's book, or no? No, they don't, actually, which, uh, they didn't give an annotation of that at all. Wow, okay. So, I'm kind of, uh, you know, a little, um, interested on in why they didn't do that. The X-Men go, uh, to the, um, uh, the new Captain America, and they have a fight with him. Of course, uh, <coughs> lots of other stuff happened after that, if you want to know. What's going on after that? You're going to have to read a book. Uh, the Apocalypse is upon them. So, things are going to be very, very, very all over the place. It was really interesting. Well, book two uh, in, in version, I think, is going to be... Yeah. I think this will probably be the final issue of that. I think it's every three books. It's a new... Yeah. Oh, no, maybe the next issue will be the last probably. one for inversion. Now, this right. next book is what we both read. We both read this, and there's only going to be two issues of this, and it all <clears throat> is connected to Spider-Verse. As a matter of fact, that's the name of the book, Spider-Verse issue one of two. This is a really good book. Absolutely. And, there's six stories in this all together. And I enjoyed this book. I really, really liked it. I'm going to do some stories. You'll do the, do the other. other right. You could do the first one. The first one all is great, right. how it opens up. The, well, this isn't the story. This is the lead-in. where. Yeah, so it's basically about Peter Parker, you know. And the, all the different strands of the Spider-Verse. Right, and I really liked uh, that page. It really felt great uh, reading a Spider-Man <laughs> book, you know, with all <laughs> that that happened. So, um, Here, in this book, Enter the Spider-Verse, Spider-Clan, The Many... Steampunk Lady Spider, Penelope Parker, and, uh, oh yeah, just Penelope Parker. Yeah. So, so Earth 2, 20... 2301. Yeah. Yeah. This is where, uh, the Earth 23 Spider-Man, um... Uh, Who's a monk, apparently. Basically is a monk. And, uh, he goes up against, um... Uh, I would swear this is a Venom. Well, he wanted to go see Venom because <clears throat> he's like, a his brother and stuff, and he wanted to talk to him. So, uh, he's just saying, you know, you hide on your mountain and everything and, uh, all that stuff that you do. So, um, they have a fight scene with each other. And that's when and the Spider-Man Spider show, up. show up with the portal. That's saying, you know, Peter, come and join us. Right. After that. The next one is Steampunk Lady Spider of Earth 803. I believe it's Mary Jane who's the Steampunk Spider. Or they don't tell you who, she, who it is, do they? I don't think they did. I don't, I don't think they did at all. Um, I I just thought it was Mary Jane at first, and it just shows her on her wild and crazy adventures in her universe, which I enjoyed that. And then the next one <laughs> is a one pager, and it's the Spider Man yeah. from the comic books. Basically, for those of you that get the um, the weekly, yeah, we meet this guy uh, twice. Uh, Morlun, Morlun, yeah. yeah. For those of you that re used to read the uh, comic strips in the newspaper, that's basically what this is. A late date. Um, uh, oh, wait. Late for a date. Basically, this is Morlun destroying that Spider-Man, the Spider-Man from the comic books. And then you get Earth-11, which is... Which is where Earth. Penelope, uh, they're on a field trip, and then she gets bitten, and then she gets the whole Spider-Man thing. 
But here's the thing, though. She uses a plastic bag without her glasses, so that way she wouldn't be noticed to save uh, Flash from the whole thing and then she becomes, and then she becomes and a spider girl and she makes her own costume and I thought that was actually pretty cool and then continuing with the um, spider-man comics these are more um, earlier comics of spider-man I believe mm -hmm. earlier because it's black and white uh, but um, basically the universe ceases to exist out of nowhere and we find out that the um, oh, what, who was it um, master weaver basically in his rebellion kind of Save that universe as Spider-Man. He tugged on the string and he hit it. So he said, let this be my one and only rebellion. I'll take this and place it in a pocket reality somewhere else where it'll be safe from the Spider-Verse. So I like that. You can see the Master Weaver is rebelling slowly, so maybe that'll lead into like later on in the Spider-Verse series. But I like how he took that comic universe and kind of just... Yeah. Tucked it away. I somewhere. really enjoyed this. I mean, it was really great reading a Spider-Man book. Again, it's been so long. I'm... It was a nice set of stories. And yeah. granted, it is. I believe it's only three ninety nine. No, no, it's five dollar book. book. It's five dollar book. It's six thick. stories. You know, you gotta. Again, you gotta pick and choose. And, and for me, two issues of this. Yeah. Oh. For me, I'm reading everything Spider Verse. Mike's reading uh, Axis. So Spider Verse is my event. So I'm grabbing everything Spider Verse. It was a nice story. Is it? Do you need to read it for Spider-Verse? Absolutely not. You just get to see Morloon killing a couple of spider uh, spider men You get and then to see you get Master Weaver. And of spider man doing their Different thing. stories. Only like short stories, like maybe five, six pages. Maybe. Yeah. And that's it. You're just getting introduced to other spiders and Morloon still killing off other spiders in the universe and Master Weaver's little rebellion beginning. Nothing that's going to, uh, if you don't get this book, it'll take away from the Spider-Verse story arc. You can skip this book and be completely fine. Personally, I enjoyed this book and I look forward to the next one. But you yeah. don't have to read it to know everything that's going on in Spider-Verse. This is an extra, in my opinion, if anything. So if you don't have the $5, don't be upset if you don't, if you don't have enough uh, to get this book. You didn't miss out on anything um, pertaining to the actual Spider-Verse storyline. You're pretty okay without reading this book. And with that, that's it for this review, guys. Yep. As always, don't forget to check out Comic Related, Comic Frontline, Zone 4 Podcast, and Frontline Gaming Zone. Together, we are your number one source for comic related news, reviews, and a whole bunch more. Guys, this Friday, episode oh, one yeah. of the Epic rewind live this show this is going to be awesome and the word epic means this is going to be of epic proportions and as a matter of fact in my opinion and i'm sure anybody who likes super smash brothers this is going to be an epic first episode and i will be doing the gameplay from so will my... i but yeah and you yeah we are going to be doing super smash brothers um for the first episode of the Epic Rewind what Live. What a great way to We're going to have, it's going to be a Super Smash Brothers special, but there still will be comics, toys, oh, line yeah. bags, and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that, and more. Far Cry is coming out this week, so you know we're going to be talking Far Cry. And WWE 2K15 <laughs> as well. So keep an eye on Lots my Twitter. Oh, and the Amiibos too. Yes, thank you. Are you done interrupting me now? I haven't interrupted you. You, you just forgot to add that. Thank you. So keep an eye on my Twitter, guys. I'll be tweeting out everything. Hopefully the, the game will get here on Friday. If it doesn't, don't worry. What we're going to do is postpone Epic Rewind Live until Saturday when we'll probably get the game. So if the game is a day late, don't worry. We'll just move the show to Saturday. Like I always say at the end of every Epic Rewind or Dark Avenger Live show, which is now the Epic Rewind, keep an eye on my Twitter. To be up to date, uh, to be up to date with all the news on my channel. Anything that happens, whether it be a postponement, a cancellation, or things that I'm going to mention that are going to be on the show, it will be on Twitter. I post any piece of news I need to about my channel or any of the video series on there first. Instagram is my bonus channel where I take pictures of all the stuff that we get throughout the week, and then which the, that stuff usually shows up on the hall. But it's basically up to the minute stuff. Um, there's going to be a bunch of pictures this week, that's for sure. But Instagram is my bonus uh, site. 
The thing that I always push you guys the most or urge you guys to follow me on is Twitter because that's where I post all my news. And as always, the comment section below. Would love to hear from you guys. What did you guys think of the books that we reviewed this week? If you review, if you read any of them, any books we didn't read, any recommendations, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Agree, disagree, likes, dislikes, and we will answer your guys' comments in the comment yes. section below. And as always, don't forget Frontline Live this Tuesday, That's right. nine o'clock Eastern Time. Yep, around there because you know we begin. There. Which is where we'll be talking about these books and more. Yep. So until then, everybody, take care, keep reading, keep collecting. We'll see you guys in the next review. Later, everybody.